Um, I'm going to kick things off uh, by speaking about our uh, research into the connections between fossil fuel companies and uh, the Scottish Parliament. Uh, and then we're going to hear a bit about what's going on down in Westminster in London. So uh, I'll get straight into it um, and begin just by reminding us of, of some of the background of why we're here. And um, this, uh, this won't be news to many of you, but um, I think it's good to, to start from the beginning when we have these conversations about um, changing the world. And uh, we, uh, the reason why we, we wanted to look into this, this question of how fossil fuel companies were influencing our politics um, is because of the, the very real and, and frightening ways in which fossil fuels are, are damaging our, our world uh, right here in 2024. And the uh, news stories about climate change are very constant presence in, in our lives. Uh, today, um, we had the hottest month um, in uh, since records began last year, and that record kept being broken repeatedly month by month by month. And that, of course, is having all sorts of impacts. And um, there's uh, many parts of the world which are facing increased um, uh, increased dangerous diseases. Um, this is some recent research that you can you can see there on the slide about a uh, possible uh, link with with cholera, which is quite some quite new science and it's really really troubling. And um, lots of longer established connections that we know that are that are contributing to hundreds of thousands of excess deaths every year already, uh, and that's getting worse and worse. And there are things that we're very increasingly familiar with here in Scotland as well. Of course, we don't connect individual weather events to climate change it's a pattern but um this was cumbernauld on sunday night i think with uh, the roofs of these uh, uh houses just completely torn off and then thrown into uh, into the back green adjacent and um these kinds of uh, more intense winter storms uh, and flooding is something that we're becoming increasingly familiar with driven by a uh, use of fossil fuels and um, fossil fuels is having are having other impacts in in Scotland too, uh, at the bottom left, um, we, uh, you can see about our air pollution campaign at Friends of the Earth Scotland, where we're trying to uh, challenge the, the thousands of excess deaths that we have every year in Scotland um, due to our reliance on fossil fuel vehicles. Uh, and also in the last couple of years, we've been uh, mindful of the, the impact of the price of gas for heating our homes and, and cooking in our homes and how that's uh, driven many, many people into, into poverty, uh, this cost of living crisis. And that is in, in very much rooted in, in our reliance on, on use of, of gas and fossil fuels to, to heat and cook in our homes. So uh, fossil fuel, this fossil fuel crisis is, is having lots and lots of different effects um, in, our, in our lives and in our communities, both globally and in Scotland. And, um, as a result of this, fossil fuel companies are, are doing their best to, to defend their image. And there's a number of different ways in which they're doing that, um, which some of which you, you probably noticed yourselves. Um, at the top, top of the slide there, you'll see a picture of uh, Murrayfield, Scotland's National Rugby Stadium, which just last summer uh, became sponsored by Scottish Gas, uh, which um, and that's not an unusual example. We had the Rugby World Cup uh, sponsored by Total Energy, a uh, major international oil company, uh, and uh, Manchester United, one of the, the biggest sports clubs in the world, has recently just had a part takeover from Ineos, uh, which is a major chemicals and, and fossil fuels company. Uh, so uh, this is, um, this is a, a new trend that we're seeing fossil fuels come into sport in a big way. Um, and these are just examples. I mean, I could have put many other ways in which fossil fuels is, is trying to kind of pre present a, a positive vision of itself, uh, despite the real impacts. And um, the, the second one here is about full solutions and how uh, hydrogen is being presented as a, a fix-all solution to to climate change, um, despite the fact that um, there's there's considerable evidence to suggest that hydrogen, especially hydrogen that's manufactured using fossil fuels, uh, has almost uh, has a very, very limited contribution to, to the future economy. Um, and of course, the shaping the United Nations process, we had 
uh, the COP, the United Nations COP, was hosted by uh, Petro State um, in, uh, in the autumn. Um, and uh, we had many, many thousands of fossil fuel lobbyists inside the United Nations process. So um, this is an industry that's that's on the defense, but they're very, very good at defending themselves. And uh, one of the ways in which um, they're doing that is, is trying to underpin their power through the Scottish political system. Uh, and that's the focus of our report, Polluted Politics, Fossil Fuel Lobby at Holyrood, which we published a couple of weeks ago. I'm um, hoping some of you have had a chance to dip into it. Um, if not, um, you're going to get the, the ABCs of it uh, just now. Um, the investigation has taken us um, the best part of two years, and it is one of the most comprehensive investigations that's ever been conducted into lobbying in Scotland. So we hope that this is going to help us understand more about the ways that, that corporate power influences Scottish politics as well as specifically thinking about its impacts on us trying to achieve uh, a just transition away from fossil fuels in Scotland. Um, so what did we find? Um, we found uh, 790 occasions where fossil fuel industry representatives had met with members of the Scottish Parliament, which is a lot. That's a lot more than we had expected, I think, going into it. This was over a five-year period. It's very definitely an underestimate. That is more that we couldn't find, um, but it's a lot, and it's it's around six meetings in an average working week in the Scottish Parliament. Uh, so more than more than once a day. So on the average day in the Scottish Parliament, there is at least uh, one meeting going on with someone from an oil company, a coal company, or a gas company, or, or their associates uh, with uh, with one of our representatives. And a large proportion of those meetings is happening with, with government ministers as well. Um, so on the, the right-hand side of this slide, you can see uh, that nearly 300 of those meetings were with senior members of the Scottish government, uh, and 14 of them were with the first minister. So uh, our current first minister or, or uh, his predecessor, Nicola Sturgeon. Uh, and uh, that's... You know, more than that, more than a third of the meetings were taking place with between the Scottish government and backbenchers were well represented as well, and all political parties were were represented. You can find a little bit more about that breakdown uh, in the report itself. And the top ten companies who were doing this lobbying um, are listed on the on the graphic on the left there, uh, and um, the top five made up an overwhelmingly large portion of over 400 of those engagements uh, with those top five which was bp sse oe uk uh, which used to be called uh, oil and gas uk so they're the industry lobby group uh, and centrica uh, centrica's uh, uh, one of centrica's brands is scottish gas so they're, they're the ones who sponsor bt Murrayfield, uh, and other names there some of which may be more familiar to you and some of them less but a relatively small number of companies are doing a, a relatively uh, high proportion of the lobbying. Um, and um, just to paint a bit of a picture about what these sorts of meetings are, are like uh, and kind of run through a few case studies which caught my eye most, but I would really encourage you to dig through the data because there's lots lots of interesting stuff there and you can look up your, about what your own MSPs were doing. Um, I'll, I'll show you a little bit more how to do that later, but he's, he's the ones that caught my attention. Um, this is Kate Forbes, MSP, and familiar to many of you because uh, this time last year she was running to be First Minister of Scotland and leader of the SNP. Uh, and she met with the uh, oil company Equinor inside COP26 in Glasgow in 2021. So this was the Global Climate Change Summit. And um, Kate Forbes went there for one day. And one of the things that she spent her time doing on that day was, was uh, listening to the arguments of an oil and gas company. Um, and uh, she actually posted this tweet um, on that on that day. I don't know if it was before or after the meeting uh, about uh, how she said there's such a buzz as delegations from around the globe arrived this morning. Uh, unsurprisingly, she did not say that she was about to go meet with an oil company. She might have had a different reaction to her tweet if she had done that. Um, but it was an ongoing issue at the time uh, around Equinor, which was um, that we were developing the stop 
this campaign to stop Rosebank, one of the largest uh, oil fields in, in contention to be drilled in UK offshore waters. Uh, and so Equinor would have had plenty to talk about um, with the ears of the cabinet secretary. Uh, following, following this up, the, the following year in 2022, the Equinor went on a lobbying spree and were very, very busy uh, engaging MSPs and the Scottish government in general. They actually spoke to Nicola Sturgeon on two separate occasions, uh, which that's a big deal. Getting a meeting with the first minister is a big deal. And so doing that twice in the same year, is, um, it's quite extraordinary, actually. It's really quite unusual. Um, and uh, this is all in the context of, the, of Equinor seeking approval for this new oil field, Rosebank. Uh, so very, very active and um, they're asking for these meetings and they're being granted them as well. It's important. Uh, Nicola Sturgeon also during COP26 um, was present at a Scottish government hydrogen banquet that was held at Edinburgh Castle. And this is in the realms of well, you couldn't make it up. Uh, I was really quite, quite taken aback when I came across this in the record. Um, but yeah, during COP26, uh, ministers and MSPs came over, uh, some of them who were delegates inside COP26, um, for this uh, hydrogen industry event at Edinburgh Castle. Uh, and uh, Shell and BP were both invited, as were a number of other uh, less than friendly companies, um, and met Nicola Sturgeon personally. Uh, and uh, this was... It, can can be seen as part of the the oil and gas industry's effort to to uh, uh, encourage the idea that that hydrogen is a kind of fix all solution to to the climate crisis, uh, which was something that that organisations like Friends of the Earth Scotland were doing our best to uh, to oppose that argument inside the COP. And um, in the last five years. Uh, a number of different fossil fuel companies have been present at something called the, the Hollywood Magazine Garden Party, which is an annual uh, uh, shebang for uh, Scottish politicians and others, uh, which is held at the Royal Botanic Garden in Edinburgh. And on in three of those years, uh, I can't remember which one's which, but uh, Drax, uh, who operate the UK's most polluting site, which is in, in Yorkshire, uh, power station in Yorkshire and BP had uh, tables they bought they paid for tables at these meetings and had MSPs sit around um, and uh, listen listen to their thoughts over dinner uh, and um, just a couple more examples which are really really live so um, at the moment Friends of the Earth Scotland is is uh, trying to build an um, opposition to a new proposed gas power station. This would be a, a major source of carbon emissions being proposed to be built in the northeast of Scotland at Peterhead. And uh, you'll be hearing more about this uh, in the coming months because um, it's uh, it looks increasingly likely like uh, this proposal is going to be approved by the Scottish government and we're going to need to mobilise to, to stop that happening. Um, but one of the, the, the two companies involved in and this project to, to build this new fossil power station is SSE. And they were actually granted a meeting with the Scottish government inside uh, the United Nations Climate Conference in Egypt uh, a, a year and, and two months ago. And um, so uh, this, is the, this is the Scottish government listening to arguments about why they should be building new fossil fuel plants inside the, the United Nations climate change talks. Um, and finally, um, uh, an example which is a little bit more nuanced but uh, troubling in perhaps a different way which is that um, last spring uh, a group of MSPs went on a tour of uh, the Grangemouth refinery in um, uh, in Grangemouth <laughs> and uh, the, um, at the time we understand the Scottish government I was actually aware of what we all found out about a month ago which is that uh, Ineos wants to shut down the, the oil refinery um, and effectively not really replace those jobs, um, which is which is a huge worry because this is very much not a just transition for, for the workers in the community at Grangemouth. Um, but the, uh, the Scottish Parliament had a committee which was holding hearings about the future of Grangemouth at that time. And 
uh, Ineos refused to attend. They said they weren't going to attend the Scottish Parliament uh, inquiry. Uh, they just didn't send anyone along, um, which is uh, an extraordinary thing to do, given that the uh, the hearings were very specifically about Ineos's um, uh, Ineos's place in Grange Mall, and um, this was covered in the Fulcott Carol, who who described it as a a snub. Uh, to Scottish Parliament by Ineos, and they said, "Well, we we, you know, we don't want to come to you. You guys can come to us." So they they insisted that MSPs come and tour um, Grangemouth, which is likely a useful thing for MSPs to do. Right? It's a huge piece of industrial infrastructure, um, but it's really troubling at a time when um, there's huge job losses proposed at this place. Ineos won't engage with the official process, and they just insist on meeting people on their own terms, and so that's. Uh, yeah, and that's what we find in, in the records. So um this kind of uh uh this kind of um backdoor influencing from the Scottish uh, influencing our leaders um is not how we think uh, we need to uh, build our democracy in order to uh, change the future for the better. Um and see Scotland as you see uh participates in lots of parts of civil society and we do believe that um uh, that lobbying is one of the things that we should be doing as, as individuals and as organizations um but the way that we prioritize um how we make decisions about the future is really really important for lots of things um and big business using its its power and might to to overwhelm the the ballot box and um, political political parties and their deliberations, uh, trade unions and social movements. And um, that's really unhealthy to have big business uh, overshadowing all of that. And that's increasingly what we see with priorities being set by business instead of uh, democratic structures. And so we we want to look for examples of ways that we can reset that. Um, and, it, and we do have a good example that we can look to, which is that the, the World Health Organization um, uh, has a framework convention on tobacco, which has been functioning for some decades. Uh, and um, it has very, very strong wording to to keep uh, tobacco lobbyists away from decision makers. And, and uh, nation states are signed up to this uh, these these rules, which um, state that um, lobbying, uh, that meetings should only take place where the extent that is strictly necessary to enable governments to effectively regulate the industry um, so, um, this is in place, and this is in place for tobacco, and has been working reasonably well. So, we would like to see this applied to uh, applied to the fossil fuel industry, which um, is another form of of addiction in our society, which is causing many, many uh, different problems. Um, to to cut big oil's influence on Scottish climate policy, and and have the parliament and government be a fossil free space. We also need better transparency and um, the records um, as you you'll see when we explore them um, have got loopholes in and, and there's problems there and we need to break financial ties between big oil um, and sally's going to tell us more about how we can do that at westminster that's relevant in scotland too um and uh, we need other spaces beyond the scottish parliament so UK Parliament and also the United Nations climate negotiations to be fossil free too. So um, I'm going to show you now how uh, you can um, explore the data yourself. Let's look at your own MSPs and um, also uh, look at investigating the, um, the lobbying register and the ministerial diaries yourself. Uh, so for those of you who are curious, you can just find out a little bit more about what your own decision makers are doing. Um, and perhaps you might uh, decide that you want to follow that up by getting in touch with your with your decision makers um, about uh, what they've been up to. Um, so um, I'm going to change screens now. This will be a little bit clunky, but hopefully not too bad. Just stop that share there. Uh, and, and the first thing I'm going to show you is and the lobbying register. And um, we'll get a link put to this in the chat box presently. And um, this is um, a wonderfully succinct website, lobbying.scot. Lobbying.scot. 
for all your lobbying register needs. So this has been in place for about five years, uh, and it's uh, a list, um, an official register of every time that an uh, organisation or company uh, lobbies a member of the Scottish Parliament. And anyone can access this, just an open website. Um, and if you click on the search button, you'll see this, um, see this page here, and we just click on information returns, uh, and then you can search by keyword. And um, I've tried earlier putting in football and found quite a lot. So there we go. You can see there's 65 meetings where the word football has been mentioned in a meeting with uh, Scottish um, members of the Scottish Parliament. So um, a more pertinent example, if we go back, would be search by keyword, and I'll just put in oil. And um, the first result here is uh, actually something that we put and uh, we brought to the press, um, which is this law, this um, PR company called True North um, had a roundtable dinner discussion with Hamza Youssef, First Minister, uh, and a special advisor, so that's a member of staff for the Scottish Government, um, talking about the uh, financing energy transition. Uh, so this is oil lobbying that's happening with the First Minister, and that's the first result that comes up. But you can also see at the top there that there are 487 meetings that use that term oil. And um, so, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, you can also search by member as well and um, and have different explore of them. Um, of the data there and it I would it would encourage you to to do uh, to do that if you're interested in finding what your members have been doing um the second thing i'll show you is the ministerial engagements uh, web page so again we'll share this in the chat box um just after i've finished speaking but this is um published with a with a bit of a delay you can see the most recent one is from was 2023 and this is a um a kind of dossier that's published every month and um, telling what ministers have been up to and um, effectively the things that they've been doing that one might consider compromising. And um, I'll share with you the most recent one. Um, it actually made me chuckle a bit because they, um, they have to um, put um, potential conflicts of interest on here and also um, gifts that they receive from where they're from. Um, and the only gift in August that was received by, um, by a minister uh, was a lamb's wool throw, um, which was valued at £175. Um, and I looked up this company, Muirhull Energy, and they're a private wind farm company. So there we go. That's um, uh, Neil Gray, MSP. Oh, and Patrick Harvey, MSP, got one as well. They both had lamb's wool uh, throws gifted to them by a renewable energy company. So that sounds, relati that sounds relatively nice, doesn't it? And a lot of the things in here are really innocuous. And this is part of the, the work that we do is to trawl through these things and find out and um, to find the things which maybe are uh, not not quite so so um <laughs> literally cuddly <laughs> um but yeah you can find all kinds of interesting things in this document so in the engagements tab you'll see a, a list of uh, the meetings and visits and it, it's basically what ministers are doing day by day uh so yeah lots and lots and lots of stuff and then um, uh uh, and very few people look at this document. So if you're just making any time uh, to, to download that data and scrutinize it yourself, then um, you're doing a, a good uh, journalistic job. So I'll stop sharing that now. And as I say, we'll share the links to these documents. Because um, the last thing I want to show you is our polluted politics data. Um, and um, this is uh, going to be by far the easiest, um, the easiest thing that you can share. Uh, so um, this, uh, the link to this is already on our website, and this is a list of uh, about 800 different engagements between MSPs and fossil fuel companies, and it's been um, organized and uh, kind of cleaned up. And what you can do is you can hit Control and F on your keyboard, and then you can type in someone's name. So um, if we put in Neil Gray again, uh, the, we'll see, uh, there's, there's an example uh, that he met with BP um, in this meeting here on the 19th of August in 2021. Uh, and he met with a lobbyist called Harry Cuff, who is, uh, works for BP. And actually, you see her name quite a lot because 
um, she had a number of lobbying meetings. And you can use this to uh, to search any of your MSPs. So there are hundreds and hundreds of meetings listed on this. And uh, as you can see, even just Neil Gray there is, comes up on 14 different occasions. And so uh, again, we'll put a link to that in the chat box and people can have a go at exploring that data themselves. Uh, and uh, um, this is a tool that we offer to you to uh, scrutinize what your MSPs are doing with the, with the time that they're um, uh, elected in office. Uh, so I'll just go back to the PowerPoint now. Um, thank you for, um, for bearing with us so far. And I hope you found that interesting to see uh, a little bit about what our MSPs are doing, engaging with the fossil fuel industry and, uh, uh, and also how you can dig into that data yourself. Um, we're now going to hear from Sally Clark, who's going to tell us a little bit about how this is panning out uh, down in London in Westminster. And so over to you, Sally. Thank you so much, Rick. So it's not just Holyrood where the fossil fuel industry is polluting our politics. Sadly, it is also happening in the UK Parliament in Westminster. And the fossil fuel industry is having a massive influence over MPs and over climate policy in London. And I, there's an amazing new campaign that you can get involved with called Fossil Free Politics and Fossil Free Parliament, which is trying to kick the fossil fuel industry out of Westminster. And it's never been more urgent for us to take action because many MPs in Westminster are receiving donations from the fossil fuel industry. They're also having many lobbying meetings with fossil fuel companies. And unlike the Scottish Parliament, there is no current lobbying register where we can search all the meetings easily for Westminster. Um, the fossil fuel industry is also having a lot of people who are moving from oil and gas companies to work in the civil service or who become MPs. And similarly, some MPs and civil servants are then moving into working for oil and gas companies. So there is a very worrying revolving door happening. And fossil fuel companies are also holding regular events at Parliament. Just last year, the Norwegian oil giant Equinor planned a breakfast event and invited MPs to attend. And Equinor is the company that's trying to develop the massive Rosebank oil field off the coast of Shetland. So there's a huge concern about the fossil fuel industry's influence over Westminster. And Fossil Free Parliament has discovered that the oil and gas industry not only lobbied for the windfall tax on oil and gas companies to be watered down successfully. They lobbied for this to be watered down, but oil and gas backed think tanks have also given a massive amount of money, 240,000 pounds to all party parliamentary groups at Westminster. These are groups of MPs and they are getting funding from the fossil fuel industry, which is extremely worrying. And can we move to the next slide, please? Thank you so much. So the new fossil free parliament campaign is aiming to kick the polluters out of our politics and instead to invite people and climate action in and to make sure that our politicians are representing us as constituents instead of representing the industry and the interests of oil and gas companies that are destroying our planet. And the campaign has come, if we can move to the next slide, please. Thank you so much. The campaign has come from the Divest Parliament campaign, which was asking the MPs to support a pledge that they wanted their pension fund to remove its investments from fossil fuel companies. And a huge number of MPs have supported the Divest Parliament campaign. Over 350 current and former MPs have signed the Divest Parliament pledge to say that they don't want their pension fund to be invested in oil and gas. And BP and Shell were both removed from the MP Pension Fund's top 20 investments. However, the trustees who manage the MP Pension Fund say they want to carry on engaging with the fossil fuel industry. They want to keep talking to companies like BP and Shell, and they think they can make them better companies by continuing to invest in them. And they're refusing to take the MP Pension Fund money away from these companies. 
So the diverse parliament team realized that it's not just the MP pension fund that's investing in fossil fuels, that this industry has a massive impact over Westminster politics and that we need to do far more to try and remove the influence of this industry. So Divest Parliament has now become the Fossil Free Parliament campaign, which is a small dedicated volunteer campaign with two consultants. And the campaign is involved in researching the fossil fuel industry's influ influence and impact on Westminster, also building relationships with lots of other groups across the UK and in Europe, and developing a group of de demands that we're asking MPs to support and a political strategy. And it's a key year for us to take action with the general election coming up later in 2024. We really need as, as many MPs as possible to get on board with this campaign to remove the fossil fuel industry from Westminster. And the key thing that we've got at the moment is five demands for the Fossil Free Parliament campaign. And Rick's just going to show us the first demand just now. So firstly, we need to block the money pipeline to stop fossil fuel companies being able to give MPs donations and to stop MPs having this financial interest to support fossil fuel companies. So we're asking MPs to refuse all donations from companies and individuals that represent fossil fuel interests. The second demand is to ask MPs to reject any invitations to events that either promote or are hosted by the fossil fuel industry. And we're also asking MPs to stop allowing fossil fuel companies to hold events in parliamentary premises and at party conferences. And many fossil fuel companies are attending party conferences very regularly, including BP, which was at the SNP conference just a few months ago. The third demand is asking MPs to remove the seat of the fossil fuel industry at the table. So to stop having lobbying meetings with the fossil fuel industry and its representatives, unless it is to discuss phasing out the fossil fuel industry. And the fourth demand is asking the MP pension fund to stop investing in fossil fuel companies and not to invest in fossil fuels in the future and instead to reinvest the money in ethical alternatives. And the fifth demand, and this is the final one, is about the revolving door. It's about civil servants and MPs moving into industry jobs in oil and gas. So we want to prevent paid work for the fossil fuel industry by politicians while they're in Parliament and also restrict movement between jobs in Parliament and jobs in the fossil fuel industry. And the first demand that the Fossil Free Parliament campaign is focusing on at the moment is fossil fuel funding to MPs. And we're asking MPs to sign the No Fossil Funding Pledge, which is to say that they will reject any kind of finance from the fossil fuel industry. And a number of MPs are already supporting the No Fossil Funding Pledge and promising that they will not accept any money from the industry, including Caroline Lucas, and from the SNP, a number of MPs have already supported the campaign, including Kirsten Oswald for East Renfrewshire, Drew Henry, and also Tommy Shepherd, who's in Edinburgh. And then other MPs who have signed include Labour MPs like Richard Bergen in Leeds, Rachel Maskell in York, and also Vera Hophouse, who's become the first Liberal Democrat to sign the pledge. She's in Bath. So a number, we've got 18 MPs already who have signed the pledge, but we really need as many as possible to support it and say they will not accept fossil fuel funding. And this is a great way that you can get involved and take action because we have a special e-action that you can do where you can ask your MP to sign the pledge. And this is just the next slide. Thank you so much, Rick. So we're going to pop the link for the e-action in the chat. And this is what we're asking MPs to sign, that they will say, I do not and will not accept financial or other benefits from fossil fuel companies or organizations representing fossil fuel industry interest, interests, including donations, gifts, or hospitality. For example, the leader of the SNP in Westminster attended Wimbledon, sponsored by BP. So a lot of MPs receive hospitality from the fossil fuel industry. We're also asking MPs not to accept domestic or international trips that are paid for by oil and gas companies and not to receive donations from all party parliamentary groups. So this is the pledge that we're asking MPs to sign. And I think just the next slide. 
Thank you so much. And we're now going to move on to a discussion about how we can get our MPs to take action and how we can find out more about what our MSPs are doing. Thank you so much, Rick. Excellent. Um, thank you, Sally. And uh, I've just realised that I had my sound on that entire time. So it's a, it's a good thing that um, I didn't uh, really yawn or anything like that. <laughs> um, wonderful. Uh, yeah, it's a really, really exciting campaign um, that's got involvement from people across the UK to put pressure on what's happening at Westminster. And um, we're particularly wanting to support that campaign from Scotland in 2024 because we're expecting a general election this year. So um, this is a this is a really good time for us to be supporting uh, UK wide action and putting pressure on UK political parties. 